Warning, this game contains content that might not be suitable for most audiences. Viewer's discretion is advised. Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Lion and welcome back to Mushroom Oasis. Or welcome to Mushroom Oasis because I put up a poll on YouTube asking you guys whether you'd prefer if I just continued it off from the previous episode or if you wanted me to make a mega episode where I go through days one and two. And you guys overwhelmingly wanted day one and day two as a mega episode. So hey, I don't have a life. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, of course, but hey, uh, link to the game is in the description in case you guys do want to play this, but without further ado, let's get right into it, shall we? My sanity has been missing for a while. Oh, my sanity! Oh, so for anyone who's, like, confused, like, I just named my cat my sanity, so, like, anytime you see this, like, pop up, just know that it's my cat. He was an indoor cat had the tenacity of a wildcat on a mission trying to leave whenever the door was open. Catios and playtime just wasn't enough for the little mister. I figured he'd come running if I left out some food by the porch. Three days later, still no cat. Yeah, I've tried everything I could think of. Asking around the neighborhood, putting up missing cat posters. Sadly, nothing came from my efforts. Yeah, I couldn't search for him during the day since I had work keeping me occupied. And there's only so many hours in an evening I could yell around the streets looking for him. There was only one place left I could think of they might have run off to. The woods by my house, right across the street. Yeah, I've definitely caught him eyeing the birds and squirrels that ran alongside the perimeters from the front window, his teeth clicking in excitement. Yeah, I was no outdoorsy person by any means. In fact, the thought of going in there scares me. But I had to find him, or at least try. The first weekend they came around, and I picked up some water. My sanity's favorite treat, and a compass to be safe. I wasn't sure where to even begin looking for him, so I started walking in a straight line, calling out his name every few steps. It certainly didn't take long for me to realize I was way in over my head. Why did I think this was a good idea? It was hard to find my bearings within the surrounding trees. I didn't want to admit I was lost, or at least yet. I could only squint down on my compass as the needle spun slowly. Pretty sure they weren't made to do that. Did I really bring a busted compass on my first venture out into these woods? Figured that would just be my luck. The only thing risking my own safety was my own incompetence. Yeah, I shook my head hastily. Nah, this is no time for negativity. My sanity was out there somewhere! Cold, lost, and hungry! <laughs> I had to keep going. Uh, my sanity! It's been hours. I am so, so lost. I don't even know why I kept searching, even after the moment I'd realized that. Why did I think this was a good idea? Hunger had been gnawing at my stomach for a while now, having missed breakfast and lunch altogether. The heat and humidity from the afternoon sun was unbearable, but the cooling air did nothing to soothe me. Even if I were to head home, I couldn't even pinpoint where that was. What do people even do in this situation? I knew it was a baseless optimism, but walking onwards was really the only thing I could think of to do. Surely I'd come across something familiar. I trudged on, my shoes carefully avoiding the tree roots intertwined across the forest floor. But in my weakened state, plus the approaching darkness, I found myself stumbling through the rough terrain. My feet hit something soft, jutting out of the ground. Da! Ah! My hand shot out as I had lost my balance. My feet clumsily tried to find purchase as I wobbled backwards, arms flapping. Poof. <laughs> what? My shoe had landed smack in a dab in a circle of mushrooms, the brunt of it causing a wispy cloud to erupt from the cluster. I stuck my nose in my elbow to avoid breathing it in. I couldn't differentiate one tree leaf from another for the life of me, but I'm pretty sure humans aren't supposed to inhale whatever that was. It smelled strongly of rotten wood and wet dirt, even as it cleared. Something shiny quickly caught my attention. I stooped down to pick it up, gasping under my breath. It was my sanity's collar. <laughs> it's so funny to think that my sanity has its own collar around it, like frick. Oh man, covering whatever the hell those mushrooms released. Yeah, I looked around desperately for any signs of him. My sanity? My sanity! <laughs> oh no! I 
come from inhaling some of the remaining dust floating in the air. I should really steer clear from this. Pocketing my sanity's collar, I retreated carefully until I could breathe again. Stepping back, I could still smell it. It must have stuck to my hairy clothes. A quick once-over, confirmed by suspicions, we have a slight cringe. A thin yet generous coating of it covered my sleeves and jeans. I leaned against a tree, dusting off my clothes in a naive attempt to get the dust and smell out to no avail. If anything, it felt like I'm breathing more of it in. What used to be musty now turned sweet. I found myself inhaling even deeper, trying to pinpoint the smell. Cucumbers? Smell like fresh cucumbers. A tingly feeling crept up my hands and neck, pinprick spreading across my limbs as a strange heat reached my face. I started to feel drunk and woozy. My senses were numb. It should freak me out. And yet, a strange comfort washed over me. I should lie down. Right now, in fact. My legs gave out from underneath me, my body toppling over at an awkward angle. I laid there, and stared, and stared, and stared. It was nice here. A peaceful calm. A perfect place for a nap, even. My eyes grew heavy as I swam in and out of consciousness. Yeah, a nap sounds really good right about now. Oh. Sorry this happened to you, little one. At the will of the forest, may you rest in peace. Huh? Wait. A human? How'd you end up all the way out here? Still breathing, too. Ah, jeez. I can't leave you here. What should I do? I woke with a jolt. It was warm, but comfortably so. I could feel the weight of a blanket on me as I tried to sit up. I couldn't. I couldn't move my body. My fingers twitched uselessly at my sides as my eyes darted around in panic. Glancing about, I could see the interior of a cabin, or at least the ceiling of one. I couldn't see much past the corner of my eyes. Where was I? How did I get here? A desperate feeling rose in my chest. I had to leave. Right now. This was wrong, wrong, wrong! I wasn't meant to be here. I could hear the crackling of a fire nearby, likely the source of warmth I had felt on waking up. I could also hear footsteps approaching. Yeah, I'll stay awake. Hi, Michael! I fluttered my eyelids, straining to look at a person approaching. My eyes widened as I took in their appearance, the protrusions from their forehead catching my attention. Not to mention the green skin. The stranger didn't sense my unease as they breathed a, high, a sigh of relief. <sighs> You're awake! <sighs> That's good. That's very, very good. How are you feeling? I blinked. Oh, sorry. I forgot about that. Here. The person held a cup to my lips, a strong, sweet smell coming from the rim. A gentle hand gripped my chin to open my mouth. I couldn't even move to resist. I know that there are some people out there who are really into this. And I stand with you, by the way. Don't worry. It'll help you feel better. I promise. Drink up. As the liquid hit my tongue, all I could feel was a vague sense of heat. Oh, what did you put in my drink? As I kept drinking, taste and texture returned. The sweetness of berries and chamomile coating my taste buds. I could even detect a hint of mint. I lifted my head finally. Hands fisting at my sides as I propped myself onto my elbows. The person kept a steady hand on my chin, careful not to pour in too much in case I choked. I finished every last drop, wiping my mouth with the back of my hand. I stared at my fingers, realizing I had full autonomy over my body again. Good as new. Now, how are you feeling? Better. Thank you. The stranger laughed. Oh, I like the way you sound! been ages since I talked to anyone, much less with a voice as nice as yours. I brushed off this strange compliment, finally looking around the cabin properly. It was a simple room, filled with spas, but decorated wooden furniture, fit for someone living alone. An open archway to the right led to what I assumed was the kitchen. Next to it, a door was shut. Possibly the bathroom? Taking it in, there was a common theme of knitted decorations strewn about. Any available surface had patterned knitted tablecloths covering it. An unfinished project laid beside the bedside table where I sat, a pair of knitting needles jutting out a pile of yarn from a small basket. 
as far as I could tell, looked like the beginning of a green scarf. The stranger was comfortable and staying silent, observing me as I glanced around. They tossed their red hat onto the bed, scruffing their hair and making it even messier. With their hat off, their unique features were impossible to ignore. Sorry, but who... What are you? Huh? Oh, I didn't introduce myself, did I? Hiya, I'm Michael, with a Y. I shook my head. No, no, I meant that, um... Michael stared at me, the left ear twitching. You look very... He snorted. Ugly? Off-putting? No, just... Different. Different, huh? You're just being nice. Well, then explain yourself. Uh, I mean, it's kind of rude, isn't it? I paused for a moment before pinching my nose bridge, exhaling slowly. I'm just... Sorry. It's been a long day is all. I should be thanking you. If it helps, it's a, uh, skin condition? It's what you humans call a... The way they said it doesn't sound confident. And the ears? Um, genetics? Right. But I assume the little, uh, I wave vaguely at their horns, antenna. Those things are just cosplay to complete the look. Would that make a convincing argument? I squinted. Maybe. Then yeah, it's cosplay. Still doesn't explain everything. Michael huffed a nervous laugh. Listen, I'm just a guy living by himself in the woods. You don't need to worry yourself further than that, okay? You know, this is... I, I never really questioned this before. I, I'm not sure if I questioned it in the last episode, but this is clearly him, like, using whatever, like, mushroom magic or, like, mushroom fumes to actually get us to, like, believe whatever he's saying. Also, yes, my boyfriend is playing Minecraft in the background. Something in his tone compelled you not to question his existence anymore. He's just some guy. Living in the woods. Completely normal. Right. Completely normal. Yeah, I'm lying. Michael beamed. Nice to meet you, lion. I fiddled with the blankets as Michael scooted closer from the edge of the bed. Yeah, I know I already asked, but how are you feeling? Any aches? Sores? Nausea? Intrusive thoughts? Weird impulses? Fever, maybe? I don't think... He places his hand on my forehead before I could react. His hands were callous, quickly retracting as he gave a thoughtful hum. He seemed to be... lucid. That's a good sign. Uh, great. He hummed absently, his twitching ear reminding me of a perturbed cat. Cat. My cat! Oh, shoot. Sorry if this is out of nowhere, but have you seen a cat around these parts? Um, it's my sanity. <laughs> He's a sweet little thing, about this big, skittish, but he can approach strangers if he needs to. I pulled out my phone to show pictures of him, only to find him missing from my back pocket. Wait, where is it? I haven't. Huh? Your cat. I haven't seen it. I see. I slumped against the pillows, rubbing at my temples. He lost his color too. Even if anyone finds him, they wouldn't be able to tell where he's from. God damn it. I could stay quiet. Watching me from his side of the bed. You came all the way here for a cat? Huh? Of course. To the point where you're willing to run yourself ragged this deep in the forest. For a cat. Do you realize how far you wander away from the nearest town? I found you near unconscious in an area nobody set foot in for years. For a cat. It sounded like he was holding himself back from giving me a stern lecture. As if in disbelief. I had such little dis as if in disbelief, I had such little regard for my own survival. My cheeks grew heated at how stupid reckless that sounds. Yeah, I mean, it's not just a cat. He's my family. Yeah, I know it's stupid for even trying, but I, I had to. Michael eased up, shoulders tense as he looked me over from underneath his unruly bangs. Family, huh? He finally tipped his head at me with a smile. You're willing to wander this far for such a small critter? I met my fair share of lost campers, hunters, and a few runaway teens or two. But someone looking for their cat? 
you're kind of weird, aren't you? I mean, yeah, I mean, I came here for the cat, but it seems I came here for the but. I'm not going to finish that sentence. I sputtered, much to his amusement. Speak for yourself? Who cosplays in the middle of the woods? Michael laughed, a deep, hearty one resonating from his chest. Fair. I think I'm starting to like you, Lion. Uh, likewise? His smile widened, but something was off. He was showing too much teeth. It felt like he hadn't talked to someone in a real long time and forgot how to smile the right amount. I rubbed my neck, tried to think of something else to say. Can I ask, how, how did I get here? Oh, like I said, I found you in the woods not too far from here. Oh, jeez, really? I knew I was tired, but I couldn't possibly. Huh, I did step at something important. Familiar pinpricks crept on my skin. Home. I need to get home. Michael stiffened as he grabbed my shoulder. Never mind that. You'd fallen unconscious from a uh, heat stroke. Heat stroke? No, no, that wasn't happening. I, I wasn't. I was fine up until Michael shook his head insistently, leaning close. No, no, Firefly, you weren't fine at all. If I hadn't found you when I did, well, who knows what could have happened. You could have gotten injured or attacked by a wild animal. There's danger in these woods, you know? No, he was right. You had been so foolish. How did you think you could do this on your own? Searching for your cat in the middle of the woods? To go in without bringing any water? Passing out from a heat stroke of all things? How could you have been so stupid? I shook my head, brain too foggy to pick apart my thoughts. He sounded confident, so why should you doubt him? Well, if it means anything, I'm glad you were there. Michael relaxed, hand on his lap once more. He grinned at me. So am I, lion. Yeah, I'm definitely glad I found you. His eyes were hidden fully behind his unruly hair, but I couldn't help feeling how intensely they were fixated onto me as he said that. The hairs on the back of my neck stood. Uh, sure. Without distraction, I have only just realized how uncomfortable I was sit sitting still. The black hobby was just starting to itch, just as the desperate need to get home again rise in me again. Uh, this was interesting, but I really should get going now. Wait! My host jumps up from the bed before I could... I mean, you can't. I can't just let you wander around in the woods this late. Please, stay a bit longer. But Michael, come! He grabbed my hand and led me across the room. Okay, okay, I'm coming, I'm coming, Michael! Michael! He stepped into the kitchen, a fragrant smell of cooked potatoes and meat hanging in the air. Two plates had been set out on a small circular table, complete with utensils and a mug of tea. Yeah, I wasn't expecting guests today, so the food is nothing fancy. But join me for dinner? He looked so hopeful, ears drooping. You'd feel bad if you had to say no. Yeah, you know what? Why, why not? I'm gonna say yes. I mean, because if you say no and insist on leaving, like, it leads to one of the dead ends where you just go out there and become one with the mushrooms. I know I'm spoiling it, but, th like, th that episode has been out for a long time. So that's on you, okay? I I'm, I'm gonna blame that on you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for doing that. That was mean of me, okay? Like, it, again, I, I take full responsibility for that. That was my bad. Anyway, I say yes. Michael's jaw dropped for a second before he quickly recovered. I, yeah, uh, yes, of course. Y here, here, um, come sit. I'll serve up the cottage pie in a minute. I said as instructed, my stomach rumbling something fierce as the smell was the only thing I could focus on. Yeah, this was definitely the right choice. What was so important that you had to leave so soon? The outside world can wait. You could stay here and enjoy my company. Oh! Actually, I should ask, are you okay with meat for dinner? I couldn't make something else for you if that's not your preference. Yeah, I'm okay with meat. Okay, you'll be having the same dinner as me then. Michael pattered about the small kitchen with an almost giddy excitement. He put on a pair of knitted oven mitts, humming as he stooped down and pulled out a steaming tray of pie from the wood stove. The smell. It filled out the kitchen in an instant as he brought it to the table. My stomach rumbling louder in response. I'm pretty sure Michael could hear it, 
but he just smiled as he served out our portions. He discreetly cut me a bigger piece, which I was grateful for. Oh, it looks so good! The crust was a nice golden color, streaked with crisp lines and garnish. The meat and veggie filling looked absolutely delectable. The savory sauce leaking onto the plate. My mouth was watering, unsurprisingly considering the fact I haven't eaten all day. Careful now, it's still hot. It was fair advice, but I didn't wait more than two blows before biting into my first forkful. Ah! It was definitely way too hot to eat straight from the oven. I could catch a polite expression, the corner of his mouth lifting as I panted with the piece still in my mouth. He gave me a few seconds to recover, elbow planted on the table. Is it good? I nodded vigorously, even though my butts were burning. Mm hmm I couldn't taste anything. He laughed. It's usually better on the second bite. I slowed down, hand in my mouth as Michael poked his fork into his own slice. I tentatively blew on the pie to make sure it was cool before taking another bite. He was right. The second bite was so much better. The seasoned potato crust was nice and crisp on top, cheesy and creamy in the middle. The savory meat filling was well cooked and bursting with flavor. Every bite felt like home. My host watched me enjoy the meal from across the table. Do you like it? Yeah, it tastes amazing, Michael. He flushed from the compliment, rubbing the back of his neck. Yeah, I'm glad. I like to think of myself as a decent cook, but I've never been able to get anyone else's opinion on that. Do you like baking in particular? Mm, not always. I usually go for simple dishes with any ingredients available. I nodded amicably, though didn't say much else. I was more focused on scarfing down dinner, which thankfully Michael didn't seem to mind. The overall atmosphere was nice and homely, and I could hear Michael tapping his feet from underneath the table. I guess they was happy to have someone stay for dinner. It did seem like he lived alone, judging from the surroundings in his cabin. So, I'm kinda curious. He perked up instantly, his focus solely on me. What made you want to live all the way out here? Ah! Uh, when you look at me, it's... Kinda easier to just live out of sight from everyone else. A pang of guilt shot through my chest. Yeah, I was giving him a hard time about how he looked too. I must have sensed it clear as day on my face. Not that you're one of them. You're, you've actually been nicer than most. Oh, I wonder if... His smile turned strained. Never mind. My point is, it's better here than anywhere else. Why don't you try the tea, Firefly? He seemed uncomfortable now. Easing into a different topic. It's probably best to follow along. Oh, sure. I reached out towards my mug. Only to push it off the edge with my clumsy fingers. Oh, wait! I bent over the side to grab it, fully expecting it again to fall just out of reach and land on the floor into broken pieces. It never did. Ha! Huh. Nice tail you got there! Instead, a long green appendage was twisted around the ceramic mug, Securely keep it in place Not even a drop had fallen out My eyes trailed along the length of it Until I pinpointed that it came from behind Michael The rest of it partially hidden behind his cardigan Michael? Is that? Yours? I, uh... I... Michael buried his face into his hands The strange ap uh, appendage from before Lowering to his side, mug and toe yeah, I'm sorry, Lion I think... I think it's time I be honest he lifted his head, fingers carting his hair back to reveal his eyes. I froze as two, no, multiple pair of irises stare right into mine before darting to the side and avoiding my gaze. I know it's a lot to take in, but this is who I really am. Please, please don't be scared. Uh, I'm going to remain calm. I swallow audibly, willing myself to not look away. He seemed to be holding his breath as I gripped the edge of the table. It felt unsettling every time he blinked those eyes in succession, even when he wasn't looking at me. Was it real? It had to be. Everything about him suddenly made so much more sense. The isolation, the avoidant behavior. He looked freaky, yeah. But he also looked sad. I... I swallowed thickly. I'm not sad. I'm not scared. Michael's many pupils blew wide, dilating like an excited wildcat. It said to shiver up my spine. Okay, maybe a little bit scared. Uh, sorry! 
He hastily grabbed an empty plate and hid behind it. Shoulders scrunched up despite his stature. He's so cute! Would it help if I just hit it? Yeah, I could fix my hair like before if that's what you prefer. His voice was muffled behind the ceramic barrier between us. It was kind of endearing. I slowly reached out to touch his hand. The slight brush of my fingertips made him jump in place. Michael? Yeah? Can you put that down? He slowly lowered the plate. His eyes were still darting to the side, avoiding me. Can you look at me? Ah, oh, he's blushing so much! Ah, oh, he's so cute! Frick! Don't look at me like that! Sorry, I just had to stop looking. This was so awkward. His hands were shaking. I looked down at a mug still floating next to him, hanging on for dear life. I reached over and plucked it straight out of his grasp. I tentatively took a sip, noticing how Michael was watching over him, the rim of the mug. The taste was mildly spicy, with an almost earthy bite to it. I recognized it instantly as ginger tea. It's almost room temperature, but it's still pretty good. Huh? He wants me to try the tea, right? Yeah, I like it, so thank you. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm glad. Michael relaxed back into his seat. Following my lead as I picked up my fork once more. Silence didn't last longer as Michael fidgeted. Are you really okay with this? With me? I gave him a once over, really taking his features. It's very different than what I'm used to. But I think I can learn to like it. Is that weird to say? Yeah, I mean, you're not bad to look at. It's actually kind of a. Uh... Damn it, damn it. What do I say? It's pretty cool. It's hot! It's hot! It's freaking hot! Huh? You're not referring to temperature, are you? No, I'm not. Oh. You look confused, but seem embarrassed anyway. <laughs> My point is, your appearance shouldn't matter. You've been nothing but kind to me so far. I'd be the worst kind of person to judge someone based on how they look. I haven't known you that long, but you seem like a good person. You're fine, Michael. I smiled at him. We're fine. Yeah, I, I see. He fidgeted some more before nodding, smiling a bit. Thanks, Lion. I'll cherish this moment forever. He beamed at me as he enthusiastically went back to eating his food. That was something. We continued a bit of small talk, mostly stories about my sanity or snippets from my personal life. Michael hung on to every word I said, not bothering to elaborate much about himself, despite my burning curiosity. I could tell he was extremely insecure about his appearance, so it's probably best I keep my questions to myself for tonight. We cleared up the kitchen in relative silence, Michael so uh, storing away the rest of the pie as I washed the dishes by the sink. Being out here in this remote cabin, I wondered how he had running water. Maybe I'll ask him later. So, thanks for dinner. Thanks for the company. Oh, and please, take the bed tonight. But, uh, uh, you're my guest and I'm the host. Take the bed, okay? All right. I'll be out of your hair first thing in the morning. Michael got quiet, staring at the floorboards. Oh, so like, you know how we said that we're the guest and he's the host? I, I'm starting to wonder if it's the other way around. Like, uh, considering like... We are probably inhabiting some sort of, like, mushroom juice inside of us. I just realized how weird that sounds given the context, but still, like, it's Michael inside us. No, not like that. Not like that. Get your head out of the gutter. I meant, is Michael, like, is Michael, like, a figment of our imagination? Is, is, is he real or not? Like, that, that's what I'm curious about. With his hair out of the way, I could finally read his expression. He did seem upset. Is that okay? Yeah, I do need your help, though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna get lost again on my own. His tail flicked behind him. Yeah, yeah, I'll bring you home tomorrow morning. I heaved a sigh of relief. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, I'll see you in the morning. Yeah. Um, good night, Lion. Good night, Michael. He seemed really happy to be able to say that. I plopped myself down onto Michael's bed, getting comfy beneath the blanket. Michael was gathering some blankets of his own to make a makeshift bed on the floor in front of the fire. He had an impressive collection of knitted items, a comfortable nest forming in the center of the room. My eyes trailed after his tail, 
fell out in the open as it flicked and swayed. Kind of like a cat. I miss my sanity. <laughs> now with a full st stomach, nosy off came easy. I didn't even realize how tired I was. I listened to the gentle crackling of the fire. My vision darkening. Hi, Michael! <laughs> Good night, lion. A soft humming invaded my dreams, stirring me awake. What's going on? I blinked my eyes to unfamiliar surroundings, swaddled in a blanket that clearly wasn't mine. Where? Oh. I spotted the familiar figure of my host, seated on a stool in front of the fire, hands definitely working on the green scarf bundled in his lap. His back was tur turned towards me, but I caught glimpses of his fingers as the needle softly clicked between the yarn. He looked incredibly adept at using them, the rhythmic movements almost hypnotic as the fibers wound together into an intricate pattern. I slowly stirred into a sitting position, rubbing on my eyes. The movement quickly caught his attention, ears flicking my direction before his eyes trained onto me. Just like last night, his pupils blew up as we made eye contact. His expression lit up the instant he saw me. Lion! Hey! I'm glad you're finally awake! You look so tired. I... I didn't want to disturb you until you've got enough rest. Ah... <sighs> morning, Michael. Good morning, Lion. Did you sleep well? Ugh. It was too groggy to answer his question. A yawn slipped out as I stretched. He smiled kindly, a soft chuckle under his breath. Like a baby, then? He pointed over his shoulder to the door beside the fireplace, tilted his head towards it. You can freshen up in the bathroom if you like, while I start making us some food. I'd have eaten breakfast by now, but... I want you to join me while the food is still hot. How do eggs and toast sound? Oh, yes, yes, sounds delicious. Great. I'll see you in the kitchen then. He tucked away his knitting materials and set it aside. Oh, I also have a surprise for you after breakfast. It's not the most exciting surprise, but... Um, just join me when you're ready. He ducked into the kitchen without another glance. I could hear his boots stud about the floorboards, cabinets opening and closing in succession in the kitchen. I suppose that's my cue. I rolled out of bed, leaving the warmth of Michael's blankets and trotting over to the door Michael pointed out. Stepping inside, I didn't know what I was expecting when he said uh, he had a bathroom, but it was surprisingly spacious. Everything looked like it was carved and polished out of wood. He seemed to have everything you'd find in a modern bathroom. A sink with a cabinet, a shower and a tub, even a toilet. Curious, I crept over to the toilet in particular, inspecting it. There wasn't a tank like you expect where the water would be stored. Instead, there was a compartment to the side full of sawdust and a scoop. I expected it to have at least a bit of a smell, but it was surprisingly odorless. There was even a roll of toilet paper to the side. It was no flushing system, but it was hygienic. Michael must have done his research. Walking over to the sink, I stared at the faucet before hesitantly twisting it. I jumped when I heard the rush of water pouring in, swirling in the basin before disappearing to who knows where. Whoa. Why am I surprised? Why am I impressed by a damn functioning bathroom sink? I helped with the dishes last night. I already knew Michael had plumbing. Eh, shaking my head, I finished freshening up and headed to the kitchen. Michael looked up as I entered, a steaming kettle in his hand with two empty mugs on the counter. It might have been delighting, but he was taller than I remembered. Glancing to the table, I could see he already finished plating up our food. Oh, wow. You work fast. Michael looked proud of himself. Can't have my guest stay on an empty stomach. Go on, have a seat. I'll join you in a moment. I returned his smile and sat down, somewhat grumbling as I looked at our plates. <gasps> oh my god, why does it look so good, Frank? Oh god, I need to make breakfast sometime soon. Like, Frank, I'm gonna, like... Yeah, it, it would be a good idea. Just like make uh like some toast, some eggs, and maybe some bacon inside too. That sounds that sounds like a really good idea. Hell yeah. Fat slices of bread were toasted perfectly with crisp buttered sides. These scrambled eggs looked tantalizing. The smell of savory herbs wafting into my nose. 
I mouth watered. Michael sat down, a steaming mug beside me before settling into his own seat. Peeking above the rim, I could see a I could see small flowers floating about, tinting the water yellow. It faintly smelled of apples. I recognized the yellow dried pellets on tea packaging I've seen before. Oh, chamomile. He nodded. I hope you like it. I'm sure I will. His smile widened, his tail swaying at the tip by his feet. He seemed more relaxed, showing his natural features this morning. And he traced the paddock and hesitation from last night were gone, replaced by a look of contentment. Michael bit into his toes and I followed suit. The food was delicious, as I expected. The chunk of toast I bit into was heavenly, the butter sweet on my tongue, and the eggs! Something about simple home-cooked food is just the best. Michael was happy to eat in silence, occasionally looking up at me as I enjoyed my food. He'd smile when our eyes met, his bottom pair nar narrowing into a happy squint. I wonder if he'd be open to some questions. Hey. Hmm? Do you mind if I ask, how did you learn to cook? How do you have plumbing in your house? What's it like living in the woods? Um, I mean, should be an issue. I'm just gonna make another save here. Uh, how did you learn to cook? Cottage pie is a pretty complicated recipe. I just wonder if anyone taught you how to cook. I'd be lucky if someone could teach me how to make boiled eggs, Firefly. But it was trial and error, mostly. My earlier endeavors were... Uh, pretty much inedible. I picked up a thing or two about cooking, though, so your taste buds aren't gonna fall victim to any nasty creations like my early days, at least. Uh, speaking of, did you enjoy dinner last night? Of course I did. You're a really good cook, Michael. I'm glad. Probably wasn't obvious, but I'm really happy I got to cook for you. I don't get guests often, in case you couldn't tell. I should ask you to cook for me every day, then. He grinned at my joke, looking pleased. I'd be happy to. I chuckled as I took another bite. So, what's your favorite thing to cook? He lit up at my question. Fried mushrooms. Fried mushrooms? Yeah. There's plenty to find and it's easy to make. Huh. I do remember finding a patch of mushrooms yesterday. It smelled pretty funky, though. You remember that? Huh? What was that? N nothing. Anyway, mushrooms were the only thing I've had for a while before I figured out I could eat other stuff like roots and veggies. You forage all your ingredients? Mostly. Mm, the times I figured out how to catch fish and hunt game were the best of my life, I'll tell you that. My first taste of meat? He did an awkward version of a chef's kiss, as if mimicking something he saw on television once. Mamma mia! <laughs> Was he trying to say mamma mia? He continued before I could even dwell on it a second longer. But nothing beats what you humans are able to make. You guys go nuts with the ingredients. Rice was a challenge. It's a precious ingredient since I had to actually get some from a store. But once I figured out how to make it nice and fluffy, I consider it a special treat. I did a double take. You go to the store? Yeah. Where else would I get it? Yeah, I thought you would grow it yourself or something. He laughed as I flushed in embarrassment. It's flattering you think I'm even capable of something that impressive, but no. There's only so much the forest can provide. But what about money? We're talking about human currency, right? Otherwise, how would you even... Do you actually have a job? A thought occurred to me. Or did you steal it? He almost looked offended. Do you take me for a criminal? No, but that would mean... Then how? Michael bit into his toes, his two eyes winking mischief. I have my ways, Firefly. What was that supposed to mean? How do you have plumbing in your house? I know it's a silly question, but I can't stop thinking about it. Oh, you were wondering about that? The embarrassed look on my face was probably enough of an answer. Ah, Well, it's nothing fascinating. It's just rainwater I've got stored above the cabin. Just rainwater? He nodded. I detected a hint of pride as he continued. It's actually a recent installment, believe it or not. Granted, the project took a while. Gathering materials, figuring out the tools, finding the right instruction manuals... Plus, I had to figure out where to store the water tank. And don't worry, I installed a filtration system so it's safe for us to use. I check in every few weeks to make sure nothing's contaminated. That sounded daunting. 
Especially considering he lives all the way out here in the woods. You did all that on your own. Yeah, I kind of had to. Anyway, it took a whole lot of calibrating and adjusting, but it really worked out. And now that I think about it, I'm glad you get to be comfortable here during your stay, too. Does that answer your question? Um, yeah. Where'd you learn to do all that? I had to figure out a lot of things on my own. There was a faint hint of exhaustion in his eyes. But to answer your question, I go to libraries a lot. It's where I learned about a majority of things. The fact that he even ventured to buildings at all surprised me. If I'm really lucky, they all have these neat DIYs and workshop manuals archived for anyone to browse through. It took a while to figure everything out. A really long time, actually. But hey, I had nothing but time. And it paid off. I'm considering upgrading the toilet next, but for now, the composting setup works fine. Learn about that in the old camping guide. He paused to take a breath, as if he hadn't talked this much in a while. Yeah, I'm rambling, but that's how I did it. Is there anything else you want to ask? Uh, wait, you've been to libraries? His ears perked up, posture straightening. Oh, yeah! I can't tell you enough how much books have helped me. I made it this far only because I figured out quickly how to read. Well, figured out that I can read. Do you visit often? In my early days, any chance I could get. Nowadays, I stick to my side of forest, though. Yeah, to make sure people don't wander too far off than they're meant to. I paused in my chewing at a teasing lilt in his voice. Hey! I'm joking. Anyway, if you're wondering what I do about this... He gestured towards his face. I just have to make sure everything's covered. You'd be surprised how little people pay attention to me when I bundle up just right. Do people not give you trouble? He shrugged nonchalantly. Small town libraries are usually so empty from my experience. And people just mind their own business there. Huh. I guess that's true. I can't remember the last time I visited a library. I guess libraries would be Michael's equivalent to the World Wide Web. I should introduce him to the internet sometime. Actually, maybe not. I mean, have y'all seen what the internet has done with Michael? Do y'all even want to know what the internet has done with Michael? Oh, boy. Not without parental controls? Finally satisfied, I nodded and went back to eating my food. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, wait, wait. What if we, what if we introduce Michael to that side of the internet? Oh, Lord. It's going to be... Oh, it's not going to be a fun time. What's it like with living in the woods? I still can't believe how cozy you managed to make it, considering the whole middle of nowhere thing. Yeah, it wasn't like this when I found it. No? It was a major, uh, fixer-upper? So the cabin was abandoned. I never would have guessed. Yeah, I'm really happy I get to live somewhere. Permanently, for once. It's not much, but it's home. What's it like? Peaceful, quiet, I do like it a lot. The forest provides me with everything I need. And nobody bothers me for the way I look out here. His ears twitch slightly. Sometimes you just happen to end up where it's most convenient for you and everyone else. The way he avoided my eyes as he said that gave me the impression there's something more to it. Like his home wasn't just out of convenience, but a fear of something else. Rejection, perhaps? Or something worse? Anyway, I don't really have anything else to say about it, unless there is something specific you want to ask. He doesn't think about his answer much before beaming at me. What about you? I know you've told me a little bit about yourself, but what's it like being you? I scoffed, waving a hand. Please, I'm the least interesting person in this room, trust me. His eyes were shining in earnest as he leaned forward. Tell me anyway. Oh, well... I told him about my life, at least the parts I was comfortable with sharing. Just like last night, his eyes didn't leave my face, occasionally darting about my features and interest. The direct ogling was making me nervous, but I suppose I was doing the exact same thing when it was his turn to, to, to talk. Eventually, I came to the topic of my job and the woes of living in modern capitalism. Yeah, I'm a bit jealous. You have the whole cottage core aesthetic practically perfect. His face morphed into a confused pout. Cottage core? I explained it to him in my own words. Oh! You're saying you want to live the way I do, out in the woods. I nodded without hesitation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't mind showing you the ropes. His tone seemed strangely lilted. 
What do you mean? N never mind. Anyways, I don't get what the appeal is, but it's not easy either, you know? The forest provides, but it's up to me to make the use of it. Starting out was... A dark look crossed over his face, as if reliving a bitter memory. Rough. But I'm built for survival. I feel like asking him to elaborate would make things awkward. I decide to veer the topic into a different direction. Doesn't it get lonely? Huh. Sometimes, but I'm used to it. He smiled, his eyes lighting up. Besides, I have you at the moment, don't I? I never thought I'd enjoy having someone else around. It must be really special. I'm starting to know a lot more about Michael. He didn't directly say it, but it felt like he was lonelier than he was letting on. Not to mention how he managed to make a home for himself, all on his own. I had to wonder if he had anyone at all. Do you have any family around? Family? His expression turned solemn for a moment before he looked sheepish. Remind me how that works again. Yeah, I get the concept based on some books I've read. I don't have what you call parents, if that's what you're asking. My mouth dropped open in shock. No parents? He shrugged and took another bite of toast. Now that I recall, how did you... What's that like? Living with so many people like you in such close proximity? Huh? That's how it works, right? You and other humans living in one house? And you have this, uh... Uh... Dana thing that makes you relate to the rest. That's what makes a family, right? What's he talking about? DNA? Dinner? His definition threw me off, but I had to answer somehow. Nah, not just that. Family is, uh, people you're related to, like your mom and your dad and siblings and relatives. People you love and care about who care and love about you too. Uh, actually, I guess they are people you live in close proximity to you two, whether by choice or not. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go about, I'm gonna go with the middle one. He seemed intrigued. Is that so? That does sound nice. Is there anyone that you love and care about? Well, of course, I do have my family. Yeah, I love my friends. I have my family. Heck, I even call my cat family. Yeah, right. Obviously. And this is the same for all families? I bit my lip, pondering the question. It would be naive to think that. A lot of families do love and take care of one another, but not everything's perfect. Sometimes that love can be misplaced or take advantage of or even abused. Michael looked thoughtful. So it starts with love. I've read some stories about that. Love, I mean. So certain feelings just don't make sense to me. Yeah, at least from a reader's perspective. I guess you'd have to experience it for yourself to understand. You stare at me. I'm blinking for a moment. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah, I never considered that. Then again, who would bother loving a monster like me, huh? Me! Me! Y you're not a monster. Yeah, I look like one, don't I? That's besides the point. You're not denying it, though. Um, it's okay. You don't have to lie to me. So, family. Right. To be fair, everyone's definition of family could be different. What about you? What's your definition of family? Michael looked surprised that I asked him that question. I don't know. I never had one, and I think your answer just confused me more. Well, if you ever figure it out, just let me know. Michael stared at the remaining crumbs on his plate before he nodded, avoiding my gaze. Sure. We both fell quiet, the lull in conversation blanketing us in a comfortable silence. All this family talk reminded me of the reason why I'm out here in the first place. To look for my beloved cat, a sight I might never be able to see again. I could help the sinking feeling in my chest, the growing pit in my stomach. I wish... I wish I was able to find my sanity. You would have loved him. Michael opened his mouth to say something, but changed his mind. My voice warbled as a lump formed in my throat. Sorry. I just miss him so much. I keep thinking if I just went looking for him sooner, maybe I would have been able to find it by now. He was quick to speak up. You did your best, Firefly. No one else could have gone to the lengths that you did. You almost risked getting yourself. I'm sure. Wherever he is, he's doing okay. You really think so? I... I know so. His voice was laced with a confident assurance, despite the worried look on his face. 
Guy nodded with a quiet sniff. I hope so. He's just important to me is all. Michael looked like he wanted to reach across the table for me, but sighed instead. Actually, I'm sorry, Lion. I should tell you. I eat your cat. <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised if that's what he said, you know. Um, maybe I do have family. Now that I think about it. Yeah, he's got something to do for a cat now, doesn't he? That was a surprise I mentioned before. Wait, really? He nodded. Are you done? I could take you to go meet them right now. I looked down at my plate. During the conversation, I didn't realize I finished my meal. Yeah, I'm done. His, movement, his movements were quick. Uh, stacking out empty plates and mugs and setting them in the sink. He grasped my hand before I could say another word, pulling me up and heading outside with me in tow. As the door swung open, I could see the forest ahead before he took me along as he ran beside a cabin. Almost immediately, my peripherals were salted with greens on both sides. I figured he was the type to grow his own vegetables, but to see in person when asked confirmation was a whole different thing. With Michael leading the way, I only had a moment to take in the surrounding garden. He had marked the different plots with messy drawings on small wooden signs jutting out of the dirt. Carrots, lettuce, potatoes, trellises of tomatoes and beans. I wouldn't be able to differentiate one plant to another without the signs. Even the chamomile from our tea just now grew abundantly close by, the small bud swaying gently. I bumped into Michael as he suddenly stopped, the man looking over his shoulder to beam at me. We reached what looked like a fenced-off area, with a bit of netting stretching all around. He stepped aside, watching me as my eyes widened. Chickens! Three fat, happy little hens strutted about like they owned the place. As he entered through the gate, the hens swarmed over in an instant at Michael's feet, circling him and pecking at his boots. Ladies? Wait, ladies? Meet Lion. Lion, these are Mawar, Sansuyu, and Primrose. Or as I like to call them, Marmar, Sunny, and Rosie. He ducked to pick one up, fluffy up her feathers as he smiled. He gently scratched the hen's little head, which I assume was Rosie. She practically melted at his pampering, eyes sliding shut. The other two flapped their wings in a huff and went about their business once more. Michael leaned closer, beckoning me to pet Rosie. She was so soft! Rosie's the oldest. She doesn't lay eggs anymore, but I couldn't bring myself to, um... You know. So I brought her some friends. Marmar came first. Sunny's a more recent addition. What do you think? Did we make a good family? I laughed and nodded, watching as Rosie nuzzle into Michael's chest. I didn't expect chickens, of all things. Were you expecting something else? I was expecting it to be someone else. Oh. <laughs> no. When you look like me, people generally don't stick around. There's that negative self-talk again. You don't even look that bad! His eyes flicked to mine, a look of pleasant surprise crossing his face. You really think so? Yeah? You can't be that naive, Firefly. I, I mean it! He let out a polite scoff as he scratched Rosie's head absently. You genuinely believe people wouldn't run away at the sight of me? Well, I didn't. His smile turned smug, the corner of his lips lifting just a little bit. Of course you didn't. Because you couldn't! Shoot. He wasn't wrong. Yeah, I was pretty much paralyzed in his bed when we first met. But... I still don't think you look that bad! Is that so? Describe the, me then. What? You heard me. Look at me and describe what you see. For a second I thought he was being condescending, but look at his eyes. All I could see was a bit of playfulness. Uh... He looked at me expectantly, eyes shining. You're... tall? Go on. You have blonde hair. He gave an amused squint, his left ear twitching. What else? You have green skin and a tall... and a tail? He chuckled, so there was no malice in it. But that's not all, is it? He definitely expected me to say it straight. Okay, fine. So you don't look human. So what? He hummed absently. As I was saying, he, animals generally don't care if you look like a monster. 
My heart twisted at his words. His passive nonchalance somehow made it even worse. Michael. A tug on my shoelace caught my attention. A light brown hen stood at my feet, her beady eyes shining. Sunny flapped her wings almost expectantly. Nah, I think she likes you. Go ahead, pick her up. Gently, like how I did with Rosie. I hesitated, but slowly lowered myself to cup Sunny by her wings. Lifting her up, she was quick to nestle herself until she was comfortably tucked under my arms. I could feel her wings wiggly as she nuzzled into my side. So cute! Michael's gaze softened as I cooed at the chicken, mimicking her small clucks. So, um, did it help? Cheering you up, I mean. Oh, so that's what this was. A fuzzy feeling bloomed in my chest as he looked at me, chicken in his arms and concern on his face. A little bit, yeah. Only a little? I snickered, rolling my eyes. Okay, mister, a lot. That's more like it. His proud grin was infectious. I couldn't help but smile back. We spent a bit more time with the hens, petting them until they were satisfied. Michael even showed me a spot where they liked to have their dust baths, little chicken-shaped holes scattered about in the dry soil bit underneath the coop. Once the gals had enough of us, we refilled their water container before leaving. He left us some treats, procuring them straight out of his pockets before shutting the gate. The girl's excited chatter over the food faded as we made our way back inside his cabin. I sat by his bed as he crouched down by the fireplace. From the window, I could see the sun outside was getting higher. It might be close to afternoon now. Hey, Michael. Huh? He looked up at me from where he was stoking the fire. I rubbed my arms, unsure where to place my gaze. I think it's a good time for me to go now? I didn't... My expression fell, but I caught myself quickly. He'd done his best to cheer me up. It'll be inconsiderate towards him to leave in a bad mood. I might have to accept I'll never see my sanity again. <laughs> I keep forgetting that my cat's name is my sanity. I think it's better if I focus on moving on. He was quiet for a moment, hands in his pockets. Yeah, if you say so. But you don't have to leave just yet. We still got plenty of daylight left, and there's some places I want to show you. Won't you come with me? I had to decide. Wait, what? I promise. I'll take you home right after. He took another step towards me. Please, Firefly? I didn't want to say it, but it looked desperate. Okay. Yeah, I'll go with you. The joy on his face was shining bright as a billboard. Great! Let me get our stuff. He disappeared into the kitchen, returning with my backpack in one hand and a satchel in the other. He passed it to me as he walked by towards the front door. Huh. I almost forgot I had this. Rifling through my bag, I found cat treats, my sanity's collar, a broken compass, and... My phone! The battery was dead, though. Still, there was one less thing to worry about. Yeah, I checked through my bag once more, finding an empty water bottle. I frowned, distinctly remembering I forgot to pack water for my trip. Or at least, Michael told me I did. Didn't I? You ready? I looked up at Michael, startling when I spotted a large crossbow in his hands. He looks so freaking cool like this. He followed my gaze and shrugged, albeit with a nervous smile like he'd been caught doing something he should be. He quickly strapped the weapon to his back and out of sight. Don't worry, I'm not going to use it unless necessary. I sure hope not. He chuckled at my indignant tone. You think I'm going to let you out into the woods without guaranteeing your safety? I made a promise to get you home, so this is just extra protection. You don't think it's a bit much? Better safe than sorry, Firefly. He did have a point. If anyone knew these woods and the kind of danger it held, it'd be Michael. I glanced over at him, noticing he changed his oversized cardigan for something more outdoor appropriate. His eyes tracked mine, the shoulders stiffening as a tint spread across his face. So, shall we? He opened the door and waved me out. I stepped outside to glance around the front yard. The landscape wasn't anything special. It was actually left quite plain, just thick with trees and foliage. Only the paths of dirt and flattened grass cued me in the routes Michael would use as he comes and goes, webbing in all directions trailing to the front door. Come to think of it, anyone passing through would be able to spot Michael's house if they squinted through the trees carefully enough. I guess he was right that nobody's walked through this area in years. I heard a lock turn before Michael joined me by my side. He smiled wide before tipping his head in a direction 
making sure I was behind him before we start walking. I was hesitant, but followed suit. It was quiet as we traveled, save for the sound of nature calling out around us. The weather was bright and warm, the sun casting pretty rays through the gaps in the trees. I had to admit, enjoyable as it was, the bird calls and rustling of leaves as we walked somewhat brought bad memories. Yesterday was miserable. I was lost, tired, and hungry. It was a chance I wasn't going to make it out alive. I watched Michael's back as he led the way, the men barely paying any attention to his surroundings. His ear would occasionally flick back in my direction, but overall, he seemed confident on where to go. Having Michael as my guide was definitely a great reassurance. It made me even more grateful he'd found me when he did. I sighed and shook up the negative feelings, keeping pace while appreciating the fresh air. Yeah, I stepped up next to my companion, willing my voice to speak after plenty of silence. This is actually kind of nice. Huh? Uh, a good nature walk. I coughed into my fist, feeling embarrassed. Yeah, I don't go outside as often as I should. Michael smiled kindly. Yeah, I'm glad I get to bring you then. Yeah, feels different when you know where you're going. Yeah, actually, where are we going? He sensed my nervousness and laughed. Don't worry, we're almost there. I looked up and saw it before he even pointed it out. The clearing in the distance, the trees growing strangely sparse in the area. I held my breath as I noticed the grass slowly start to dot with flowers, delicate blooms swaying here and there in the breeze. As we got closer, Michael watched me as my mouth dropped, dropped open, a knowing twinkle in his eyes. It was breathtaking. A secluded little meadow of flowers, lit up by beams of light making the scenery resemble a page from a forgotten fairy tale. Butterflies flitter about in pairs, their wings flickering and complimenting the surreal yet enchanting ambience of the whole place. Michael let me gawk some more before walking ahead, turning to face me before sitting down to relax on the grass. He slipped off his satchel and laid on the grass by his side, along with his crossbow. I blinked out of my stupor and approached him, spinning around to drink everything in before plopping myself down next to him. So, what do you think? Pretty, isn't it? I nodded dumbly before finally glancing to face him. The man's gaze on me softened as our eyes meet. A butterfly approaches rapidly, making me flinch on instinct. He landed on his finger as he held it out, its wings flapping gently. He smiled at the dainty creature, a fond look on his eyes before he held it out towards me. Do you like butterflies, lion? I love butterflies. I do. Yeah, I think they're so pretty. This is... This is amazing, Michael. His usual prideful smirk was absent, replaced instead with a shy smile. I'm glad you like it. The sun was at its peak now, the air getting warmer as minutes passed. The leafy canopy over us provided enough cover for us to not overheat. Michael picked a flower of his other hand and placed it in my palm, his tail looping loosely around us both as my cheeks darkened. He closed his eyes and leaned back further, the butterfly still resting on his hand. My ears caught a soft rumbling before I realized it was coming from his direction. I almost wanted to ask, but I did not want to ruin the moment. My gaze dropped as I twirled the flower in my hand, holding the stem delicately. The gesture felt platonic, but also romantic. I wonder if Michael was even interested in relationships. He'd been alone most of his life. He'd probably get tired of my presence sooner or later. Before I could contemplate further, the butterfly on Michael's finger took off, my gaze trailing after it as it left the sunlight and flew away into the woods. Which reminds me, Michael? Huh? Don't get me wrong, this place is stunning, but is it? Okay, we go now. He straightened from his relaxed slouch. Why? We just got here. I chewed on my lip, hesitating. I live it here, I do. I want to go home, Michael. Michael studied my face. Lion, do you want to leave me that badly? No! I just... I need time to recover from losing my... <laughs> I am so sorry, but it's just so funny seeing myself, like, lose my sanity. <laughs> I know it's silly and dramatic, but knowing he won't be here when I get home. I trailed off, not a shot of guilt and regret filling my chest. I just need to get it done with. I feel a hand rubbing my back. Michael nodded slowly, 
looking me in the eyes. His smile was gentle. That's okay. I understand. But maybe this place can help with that. It's a nice spot to nap in, isn't it? I picked it out. Just for you. Why don't you go ahead and lie down? His words made you sway. The sun bout of sleepiness weighing heavy over your eyelids. He was right. It is a nice spot to nap in. Why were you in such a hurry? You yawned, laying back to stretch on the grass. The warmth from the ground seeped through your clothes, lulling you into a sense of comfort and safety. There you go. Just, just spend some time with me. Just a bit more. Please. Oh! Here's something else I could show you. He reached into his satchel. And pulled out a wooden box. It's called a kalimba. I blinked slowly, clarity coming back as I shook my head to pay attention. The box fit neatly in his hands, Michael holding it as if he were typing on a phone. I could see it had a hole in the middle of it with thin strips of metal arranged in a triangular shape over it. What does it do? A proud smirk spread across his face. I'll show you. He began to pluck at the metallic prongs, a gentle ringing sound resonating with every flick of his thumbs. I couldn't recognize the song. He might have made it up himself. I closed my eyes, enjoying the tune. Michael gave a soft chuckle as he kept playing. Relax, and listen as long as you'd like, Firefly. A few minutes passed by, with Michael plucking away at the instrument, the two of us sunbathing like two cats on a Sunday afternoon. I must have dozed off, as the next thing I knew, I felt a nudge on my shoulder. Comfy? Ugh. He chuckled low when I refused to open my eyes. I mean, if you'd rather stay. My eyes shot open, my whole body jerky to sit up. Michael glanced at me, clam Kalimba in his lap, and half a forget-me-not chain in his hands. What? I shook my head, slapping at my cheeks. I can't believe I fell asleep! I just... It's alright. He cut me off. His sigh was heavy. Yeah, I was hoping. Never mind. He patted my shoulder, though his eyes didn't, his smile didn't reach his eyes. Thanks for being here with me. Maybe we can do this again sometime. If I ever see you again. Let's get you home. He rolled over to his feet and stood up, brushing off dirt and fixing his satchel. Come on. We gather our things and set off into the unknown once more. Well, unknown to me at least. Michael seemed to have a map of this place ingrained in his brain. Seem a bit sleepy still, so let's freshen up, okay? We walked a bit further away from the clearing, coming across the river. Compared to the rest of the path we walked, the area was shaded considerably with the thick canopy of leaves over us. The flowing water looked inviting as I kneeled down by the bank, Michael idling close by. I dipped my hands in, eager to wash my face. The water was refreshing and cooled my heated skin in the afternoon sun. I pulled my hand back to see Michael pe peering over my shoulder into my reflection, smiling with a faraway look on his face. He startled when our gazes meet, Iris's darting away to look at himself instead. Immediately, his expression changed. His ears flattened, a grimace twisting his features as his lips curled back. I've never seen such contempt in his eyes as I did then, staring at his own visage. He stepped away, retreating underneath the cover of a tree to lean against it with crossed arms. He doesn't notice me. He doesn't notice me watching. I patted my hands dry on my shirt and approached him. You ready? Yeah. I stopped him before he could turn to leave. He looked at me with a questioning look, tipping his head. I hesitated. I wasn't the type to speak my mind directly. Most of the time I keep things to myself and let things go by. But nobody should look at themselves and have this sort of reaction. Hey, you know you're not a... I might as well be frank. You're not a monster, Michael. He looked taken aback. What makes you say that? So how you were looking at yourself. How you talk about yourself. None of it is true. I keep telling you, you're more than just your appearance. I don't know what compelled me to do it, but I did so anyway. I reached for his hands and held them between us. His eyes widened at the contact. All it took was a day with you, and truthfully, I think you're the most wonderful person I've ever met. He made a choked noise. I... 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 
I'm just some nobody compared to you. That's not... Shut up and listen! He probably shut his mouth with an audible click of his teeth. From where I stand, you saved my life. You've taken care of me better than I could ever ask for from a stranger. That already proves me you're not the monster you think you are. You're charming, you're smart, you're sweet. You're a million more wonderful things, but you are not a monster. I take a second to compose myself, lowering my voice. You may look different, Michael, but guess what? His multiple eyes stared into mine, ears flattening as if fearing the worst. That makes you all the more beautiful to me. His breath hitched. Yeah, I could feel his hand squeezing mine, fingers trembling. It was like he forgot how to breathe. Yeah, I realized my hands were getting sweaty. I pulled away hastily, scratching at my neck to avoid his gaze. Yeah, I could feel the blood rush to my face. Yeah, I could duck my whole head in the river and probably set off steam. Sorry, they came out of nowhere. It just didn't feel right if I didn't say anything. I hope you understand. An awkward silence passed between the both of us. Um, anyway. I caught him mumbling under his breath. I can't let you leave. What? I, I said, you can't leave. I mean, without your cat, right? I frowned. I've already tried, Michael. Like you said, it was stupid for me to just wander off into the woods, as if I'd find him through some dumb luck. He paused, his fist clenching. But I haven't, huh? I haven't tried. I know these I know these woods better than anyone. I can try looking for him. But that means that you can't leave yet. Michael, I appreciate the offer, but I don't think I should stick around any longer. I have a job and responsibilities and and He hissed in pain, the sun migraine overcoming his senses. He felt sick, his stomach wringing itself into knots. It felt like the world was warping around you as your legs wobbled. Your body buckled over as you resisted the urge to vomit. Whoa! Michael caught you as you slumped gracelessly to the ground, your head resting on his shoulder as he, as he cradled you close. Hey, you don't look so good. Your vision doubled as he spoke, his speech oozing together words into an indecipherable mess. Are you okay? You need me to carry you home. Uh, yes, please, yes, please, yes, please, yes, please! Okay, no problem. Just hang in there. Hang on to me. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You don't deserve this. If I could just... Just one more day with you, I'd be the happiest man alive. Here we are. Sketchy tucked in. Um, I should give you some clothes. Especially since you'll be staying another night. You're okay with that, aren't you? Anyway, that was Mushroom Oasis. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys do want to play this for yourself, so the game will be in the description below. We will be back soon enough with day three of this once it drops. So hey, be sure to stay tuned for that. I actually really do like the writing for Mushroom Oasis so far. Like day one was basically establishing like this uh this new world of ours like how like how we even got this situation and like uh basically meeting michael and figuring out that he's not what it seems day two was getting to know him better as a person and i'm feeling day three is definitely gonna go a lot harder at least that's that's my guess of this like i don't know but i am excited to see where day three takes us but anyway thank you all so much for watching i hope you all have a lovely rest of the day and as always i'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.